Tenokoto, Tenokoto Couture to Fano. Um, I don't usually have notes, but I've tried to compress about five hours to five minutes, so this is to keep me on track. But I'm going to start by putting Mark Prain on the spot here. A long while ago, he called me up and told me very excitedly about the Global Impact Visa. And I don't know whether Mark remembers my response, but I think I played the really cool, distant, detached prof journalist going, well, yeah, right, so there are these immigrants coming, and we're going to give them visas. And, and um, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> but but fortunately, it wasn't a video call because um, I was going um, because it made complete and utter sense to me as to why we would do this. There is something about us as a place, um, as a people, um, that um, means we do think about things differently and innovate a little bit differently. We are at the edge of the world. We're a long way away from other things, but we're extraordinarily well connected with the planet and the rest of the world. And so extraordinary things happen. Let me give you three examples. The first one is the uh, global climate negotiations have been deadlocked for a very long time, most tragically at Copenhagen in 2009. But at Paris, an awful lot of fantastic things happened. But one of the reasons they happened was there was a whole new structure about um, independently determined national contributions. Uh, so each country would put on the table what it thought it could do about climate change. That was a New Zealand idea um, that was put on the table. That's one example. Here's a commercial one, because heck, I'm a business journalist. A couple of years ago, I fulfilled a long-standing ambition. I walked into the Sogo department store just down the road from Tiananmen Square in Beijing um, to fulfill a long-standing ambition, which was to visit one of the 600 stores within stores in China of Convita. And there was this glorious gift box, five products, the price tag, uh, Remimbi 3031, 660 New Zealand dollars for five products, and I didn't understand it. I had to use Bing, because I couldn't use Google, to work out what the feng shui of that was. And the three was about the three levels of life, and the zero was from the beginning, and the one was from one source. And so no wonder people would want to pay so much for a bunch of Monica honey. Um, one last story. Um, more than three years ago, we were sitting around the boardroom table at, um, well, it was boardroom table, that's so, so great. We were sitting around a table having a board meeting at um, our, Ke our Kena Foundation. And um, Anna uh, will remember this very well. Our wonderful chief executive, um, Alex Hannan, said, you know, I think there's a really good case for hosting the 2017 Social Enterprise World Forum. And we were going, oh, yeah, we're very small, that's very big. And uh, he said, oh, I think we should handle it, we should host it in Christchurch. We were, well, Christchurch is more rubble than city. But anyway, a few weeks ago, we did host the Ninth Forum. Uh, New Zealand did, this wasn't us. Um, and um, the biggest number of people in the nine social enterprise world forums to date turned up. More than 1,600, and with other people engaged as well, it was over 2,500. Um, and we could appreciate how we have a certain way of doing social enterprise um, that is deep in our own roots as a society and an economy and a cultures, many cultures. Um, and we shared that with others as we learned from other people too. Um, so I know, and you know, I, I'm addressing this to the New Zealanders in the room, that um, we can bring people into our fauna in Aotearoa and help them take, uh, develop something quite differently and better and take it out something far more wholesome to the world. I know that because as a journalist, I write about those things all the time. And um, one of my main goals as a journalist is to explain to that to people and encourage people in that and the ways we can do that, uh, the ways we can um, play that ro those, those roles in the world. But more deeply, I know it from my own experience um, as an immigrant uh, with my family 20 years ago. Um, the Brummy Orums, uh, family V1, if you would like to uh, uh, think of us that way, um, are actually quite, were quite different from the Kiwi Orums family V2. Now, we're actually still very much the same people, but I'd like to think um, that um, the depth of engagement uh, it, that is possible in New Zealand um, that has made us more capable, uh, more fulfilled, and more out there in all kinds of ways. 
Um, let me give you the example of my daughter, because um, we New Zealanders don't like to skite about ourselves, but we feel quite good about skiting about our children, uh, which, of course, our children have nothing to do with us in terms of how they turned out. Um, she is um, a composer, and uh, she is currently, and has lived now for some years, in California. Um, and, um, but who she is as a Pākehā New Zealand, deeply engaged with Māori and Asian culture in this country, makes her a very different uh, and quite remarkable composer. Hey, I'm her dad. I can say stuff like that. But other people say it too. Um, <laughs> she... Uh, she comes back to New Zealand often, so she was here early this year to be the composer in residence for the National Youth Orchestra, giving them an experience they weren't likely to get from anybody else. The NZSO was quite resi resistant, but they finally came around to it. Um, and, um, and yet she keeps collaborating. So she's working with her great friend, another Pākehā composer, Alex Taylor, on a big project to take to the Darmstadt Festival in Germany next year, which is the great granddaddy of New Music Festival. And they'll be taking New Zealand music back there Taonga, uh, Poro, uh, and all. Um, so, um, as a Kiwi fellow, I am quite ecstatic <laughs> to be um, a fellow, um, and I'm going to do this in a slightly Kiwi fashion of being a multitasker, because theoretically we're supposed to be largely investors or um, in, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, as an investor, um, my investment um, is in the people I know in New Zealand, so watch out, I've got all your names and numbers that I'm going to be engaging you. And what we know, and investing what we know, and what we can help um, in our overseas fellows. Um, I'm also a small investor, heck, I am a journalist, earning a living in a profession with a deeply broken business model, um, so the sums are modest, uh, both in social enterprise and tech companies, so there will be, be a bit of that too. Um, but I also see myself as an innovator um, in two respects. Uh, first of all, crucially, around um, media and storytelling, and it's a great thrill for me now to um, um, be um, in my first startup in media after about 12 years of trying with newsroom.co.nz. Check it out. Um, and um, <laughs> so I will be learning lots from um, people who are extraordinarily creative in media. I could regale you with stories about that um, amongst our fellows. Um, but we, I want to innovate something much bigger. It's about um, uh, our New Zealand story, because I think in New Zealand, many, many of us have great, g grown great confidence and skills, say over the last 10 years, but it's been a long journey that's been going on for many hundreds of years. Um, and I think many people are up for a much um, very bigger challenge about what that might be. And um, the... Um, I, what, I, what I think is going on here is that um, working with our international fellows, um, we uh, are, f I, I think I'm almost trying to coin a, a, a Maori term here, the follow followers, with my follow followers. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think we can um, help New Zealanders um, develop that sense of our place in the world. And let me um, describe to you, uh, in closing, uh, one experience I've had this uh, week here. Um, I expected to come to learn an awful lot about the world from my follow followers, uh, and I have about all sorts of uh, things in the world. Um, but the greatest shock to me has been to learn something about my own culture. And when I say my own culture, my roots now, after 20 years, um, are deeply sunk into this land um, and um, I kind of look up wistfully at the hill from where I live at the wonderful marae on the hill of Nati Fatima. They've got the best real estate in the city. Well, at least you got it back. <laughs> um, and um, so I feel immensely strongly that it's my treaty too, um, in terms of how it uh, defines me as a, a New Zealander. And um, so here's the story. Um, for 20 years, I have been astonishingly resistant to the hacker. I've actually, and I choose these words carefully, uh, I actually have hated it, frankly, uh, because I only saw the warrior in it. And when it's rugby players, I had enough of rugby at boarding school 50 years ago, um, uh, it makes it even worse. 
So I've always been very resistant to the hacker. But then um, Matthew, who has been guiding us wisely in many things this week, um, said, oh, we're going to do a welcome hacker. And I went, oh, my God, that's right. Um, but as he described that role that played, and it's still about being strong and in a sense, in a very real sense, warrior-like, um, but saying strongly, here we are, who we are, um, it is a welcome. Um, it is, uh, if you come in peace, it's an exchange. I thought, this is something very interesting. And um, Ellie, who was our first speaker this morning, um, wonderfully encapsulated this for me when we were discussing it the following day. Um, she talked about how remarkable it was um, to be able to give expression together the men, the women who are follow follows, um, just standing there, being strong in who we are and where we are, and yet being strong enough to be very open. And that sense that um, if we are a people here in New Zealand who are ever stronger um, in who we are as a people, um, what this place is and what it does to people, um, and we are ever more open to the world, then that is the greatest resilience um, and the greatest contribution that we can make as a very small nation in the world. Um, and so um, that hacker for me was um, the most ex amazing thing about the fellowship because, as I said, I thought I was coming here to learn about the world, but I learned about myself and my culture, and this has only just begun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.